Hello everybody! Guess what I got today? It's the Wacom Cintiq Pro 13 which I've been waiting for for quite a long time. Unfortunately Wacom are not shipping to UK residents so I had to pre-order on Amazon last month. They got it in stock on the 2nd of January and I received mine on the 5th. Now unfortunately I had more trouble unboxing than I anticipated but let's get into the unboxing and you can see for yourself. I'll also go through the setup in the second part of the video, so keep on watching. I was a little disappointed when I got the parcel, because the box was squashed and torn in the corner as well as across here. When I opened the box I realised why. There was about 2 inches gap around the sides, I'm surprised as a £934 worth of graphics display didn't come better packaged with bubble wrap or something, but I'm glad the box inside wasn't squashed. I love the minimal look of the box, kind of reminds me of the MacBook Pro packaging. It features the Wacom artwork from their website. Along the side they've added the model info, and finally on the back there's the detail specs, system requirements and also a picture of the Wacom Cintiq Pro itself. Along two other sides there are two stickers that seal the box together. Inside the box you see the Wacom Cintiq Pro and the Pro Pen 2, but firstly we will open the compartment to the right. Here there's a little leaflet, a screen dusting cloth and the wall adapter. I'm really disappointed with this as it's an EU plug. I'd have expected a UK plug since I purchased this from Amazon UK. Now to get the Pro Pen 2 out, as you can see it slots into its little home, quite nice and tight. I couldn't get it out quite as easy as I'd like to. Most packaging like this come with a sort of indent place where you can put your fingers in and pull stuff out. Instead I had to use a rounded end scissor to get it out. I believe it's similar to the Pro Pen 1, but it's quite a fair bit fatter at the bottom compared to my Wacom Bamboo. It does get thinner towards the top where the eraser sits. Getting the actual display out was a lot easier than getting the Pro Pen 2 out. This looks really nice and modern compared to the previous ring. It also felt quite similar in weight compared to my TrueI 12 inch Windows 10 tablet. The Wacom Cintiq Pro has a nice matte screen. I can also see that it's got the two kickstands at the back. Underneath the tablet it looks quite daunting as all it seems to be is just loads of wires. But first up we have a little clip that slots into the top of the tablet. This acts as a nice little holder for the Pro Pen 2. Next we have the Thunderbolt cable which is double ended. Then there's a USB cable which is also double ended. And a USB-C cable which is yet again double ended. There are two additional booklets. The first one is the instructions. One side explains how to use the Pro Pen 2 stand and the other has a set of instructions for the Cintiq Pro. There isn't a language for it as it's all in pictures. The second leaflet contains some interchangeable rings for your Pro Pen 2. I think it's quite a nice feature and I'll definitely be changing to a black. I, I don't know, I just like black. Next we've got the adapter thing to go with the wall plug. I'm just going to plug mine in now. I believe this disc thing is supposed to be the nib holder for the Pro Pen 2 nibs. It's got quite a handy little feature which you can use to remove the nib from the Pro Pen 2 before replacing it with a new nib. Turn it around and it's a lovely Pro Pen 2 stand which no doubt will look lovely on any artist's desk alongside the Wacom CT Pro. Also take note that this feels like a paperweight and the addition of a rubber ring around the base means it won't slide around on gloss surfaces. This was by far the hardest item I have unpackaged in my life. When I look back at the video footage, I had spent about 12 minutes trying to get it out. It's the little adapter which I'm going to need because my MacBook Pro doesn't have a USB-C, which I think is the Thunderbolt 3 connection. So I've got to use a USB and Thunderbolt 2 connection which is also supplied in the box. Eventually it came out when I pulled on the clear protection sticker that covers it. 
Now I faced a new problem. The standard two pin adapters I buy from Wilco's here in the UK weren't compatible with this EU plug. It just didn't fit in. I solved this problem by using an adapter which came with a phone I purchased from China. Although I do feel kind of ripped off by not being supplied with a UK wall plug. The other end of the wall plug is a USB-C cable. The Wacom Cintiq Pro comes with three USB-C ports, two of which are on the left side. I'll be plugging the power cable into one of these. This built-in kickstand at the back is a nice feature, simply pressing them like a button releases them. The smaller pen holder attachment slots into the top of the Wacom Cintiq Pro quite comfortably. Let's move on to the rest of the wires. We will be needing the double-ended USB-C cable first. To the right side of the Wacom Cintiq Pro is the third USB-C port and a slot for the SD card. I'm going to connect the double-ended USB-C cable into the USB port on the right side of the Wacom Cintiq Pro. Now do you remember that little Wacom adapter which I had a really hard time getting out of the packaging? Well this is the part that I'm going to need now. It fits right onto the other end of the USB-C cable. Now the reason why I need this is because my MacBook Pro doesn't come with Thun Thunderbolt 3 which is what I believe USB-C fits into. I'll just quickly show you my MacBook Pro. It's the mid-2015 range and it's got two Thunderbolt 2 ports. There's no Thunderbolt 3 or anything in this. I will need to use the Thunderbolt 2 cable that came provided with it and the USB cable. Now all it is is a case of connecting those two wires up to the little black box and also connecting the other end to your computer, or in this case my MacBook Pro. The final instructions in the booklet ask us to go to wacom.com forward slash start, so let's do that. We're taken to a page which contains all the Wacom products. Wacom Cintiq Pro is right at the top of the list, and that's what I'll be clicking on. This takes us to the getting started with your new Wacom Cintiq Pro page. The first thing I notice is download the latest Cintiq Pro driver link. It has the option for the Windows as well as the Mac OS X. I'm going to click on the Mac OS X because that's what I'm using it with. You get a little warning to ask you to uninstall any old Wacom drivers that you might have. I have the Wacom Bamboo so I'm just going to quickly uninstall that and then go ahead and download Wacom Cintiq Pro Driver. The driver is only about 92 megs or so, so it doesn't take very long to download. Once it's downloaded, install it as you would normally. Now let's switch on our Wacom Cintiq Pro for the first time. You'll find the power button right at the top corner of the Cintiq Pro. The Cintiq Pro doesn't take very long to come on, maybe a couple of seconds? You first see the Wacom logo and then you should see your desktop. The setup wizard should pop up immediately. Once it does, it'll ask you to log in. Now I had a little bit of a problem here. Neither could I sign up, neither could I log in. It told me that I already had an account with them, so when I asked to reset the password, it just had an error. I couldn't log in with Google Plus either, but eventually, somehow, I managed to log in. I'm not sure how to be honest, it just suddenly said that I'd logged in. After logging in, I was asked to calibrate the pen. So just click calibrate and off you go. As you can see, I took my time in doing this part. I wanted to be as accurate as I possibly could be. But don't worry if you mess up on this part, you can do it again. It's getting quite late here in the UK, but I had to have a little test of this thing. So I went into Clip Studio Paint and, well, just messed about. That just about wraps up this video. For me, unpacking and setting this up was a lot more challenging than my Wacom Bamboo from years ago. In fact, I had no problems with my MacBook Pro or my Chui Hi 12. But only time will tell if it's been worth my while. I'm very excited and definitely will be comparing this with my £150 Chui Hi 12. The ultimate question I have is whether it's been worth spending an extra £784. Anyway, until my next video, bye!